everyone. We'll get started in just a few moments. Um, before we get going, I just wanted to make sure that everybody here can hear me speaking and see my screen um, so that I know that I'm talking to actual people. So if you could just take a moment and let me know if you can see my screen, you should see the cover slide, which says 2021 Community Challenge. Um, and you should hear me speaking. If you could just go into your chat module and let me know, that would be a huge help to me. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Susan. Um, I'm going to just put myself on mute for another second or so to give everybody a chance to log in, and then we'll get going right at the top of the hour. All right, um, it's just about three o'clock here on the East Coast. Um, welcome everyone to the second Rock family of companies community challenge training webinar. My name is Linda Gerhardt and I'm the senior community engagement manager here at Mighty Cause. I'm filling in for Dawn, who is the Mighty Cause contact and manager for this giving event, um, just because she had something else she had to do today. So I'm happy to be leading you through today's presentation. Um, again, I work for Mighty Cause, which is the fundraising platform for this year's community challenge. Um, Mighty Cause is an employee owned business and we are focused on the nonprofit customer. Uh, we help host giving events of all sizes, just like the community challenge, but we also offer a full nonprofit suite of fundraising tools for year round giving. Um, so today I'm excited to go over some of these tools that you can take advantage of during the community challenges, the community challenge rather. Um, but before I do that, I do have a couple of housekeeping items to note. Um, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted in the toolkit on the community challenge site under the resources tab. So I do have to upload it to YouTube. So there may be a little bit of downtime before you're able to access it, but you will be able to get it on the Rock Community Challenge website once we're done here. Um, and you can also use the Zoom Q&A module to send any questions that you have while I'm presenting. Um, and we'll get to as many as we can after the webinar. Um, so I believe we have Deneen on the webinar as well. Are you there, Deneen? Okay, so I didn't see her in the participants list. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and move along. Deneen, if you're, th are you there? Yes, hi, I'm here. Hi, I'm sorry about that. I didn't see you in the participants list, um, but I just wanted to welcome you. We have you on the line. Um, so I'll just turn the mic over to you for a moment, Deneen. Great, thank you. So I really just wanted to pop in here uh, for a couple of reasons. One, just to say thank you so much to all the participants. We're really excited about having all of you participate in this year's community challenge. It's gonna be a great time. Um, and secondly, just to remind you guys, um, if you have any questions regarding the challenge, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I am here to serve as a resource to all of you guys. Um, and I will stick around at the end as well for any questions you have. So I'll hand it back to you, Linda. Awesome, thank you so much, Deneen. All right, so here's a look at today's agenda. We'll just basically be going over some of the basics. Um, we're gonna touch on getting started on the platform and all of the prizes that are available. Um, and then we'll move into a deep dive on strategy and utilizing the tools that come with your Mighty Cause account that are sort of a benefit to you as you um, plan your campaign and even after your campaign. And lastly, we'll have a Q&A session to make sure that we answer any questions that come up while I'm presenting. Um, and if you have a, a question during the webinar, 
webinar, just go ahead and type it into the Q&A box of your Zoom uh, module, your Zoom panel, and we'll cover it at the end. Um, if we do run out of time today, uh, we'll go ahead and make sure that everybody gets emails with the answers, with the questions. Um, and if there's a running theme with the questions, if there's a trend and something that seems a little unclear, uh, we'll be sure to add that to the FAQ on the challenge page so that page so that everybody can get an easy answer to any questions that may come up that are common. All right. So we're going to start with the challenge basics. Um, the 2021 Rock Family of Companies Community Challenge is a four week long event that runs from August 2nd at 12 p.m. Eastern time to August 27th at 4.59.59 p.m. Eastern time. So basically a fraction of a second before 5 p.m. While your organization will only be participating with nonprofits in your location, the challenge is benefiting five separate markets um, that include Detroit, Cleveland, Charlotte, Phoenix, and a national market. Uh, the really awesome thing about this event is the uh, prizes. There are $275,000 of prize money at stake, and there are lots of opportunities to win some of those prize, prizes for your nonprofit. And we're going to get into the prizes available a little bit later on. This is the homepage for the community challenge this year. You'll see the URL here at the top. Um, and I would definitely recommend bookmarking it because you'll most likely be accessing this page frequently. Um, you can access each markets page and the grand prize leaderboards from this overall challenge site. Once the challenge starts, this is where you can find the leaderboards that will show you, you, show you your bonus challenge standings. So make sure to bookmark it now so that you have it when you need it. Um, this page has all the tools you need to. Um, you'll see the resources tab when you, uh, where you can find a comprehensive FAQ, as well as the bonuses for each location, um, the challenge rules, which are coming soon, and general information about this year's community challenge. Moving on to your organization's page for organizations team page for the community challenge this year, um, we recommend taking some time to get to know your team dashboard. Um, your dashboard is the admin, mar admin bar that appears on the left side of the screen when you're logged in and you're on your nonprofits team page. You'll automatically land in edit mode, which is the view you see here in this screenshot um, when you access your team page. You can always see the public facing view at any time by clicking uh, while you're editing by clicking live page, um, which is the eyeball, eyeball icon. Under live page is the page editor icon. Um, this allows you to open the page back up for editing if you're not quite satisfied or you have some additional changes you'd like to make. The campaigns icon gives you a quick overview of all the fundraisers that have joined your team page, while participants gives you visibility into each team member's progress and gives you the ability to communicate with them. Um, you can also invite new supporters to join your team through the participant section of your team page. Um, below that on your dashboard is the report section. You'll be able to preview and export your team's donation report and utilize Mighty Cause, the Mighty Cause Matching Grant tool, which we're going to talk about a little bit later on. Um, the last option on your dashboard is the settings. Uh, within settings, you can update your social sharing template, add a fundraiser template to make joining your team super easy for all of your supporters, and you can view and manage your challenge checkout flow by adding the suggested donation amounts and customizing the thank you page that donors will see after they complete a transaction. So you'll be spending a lot of time on this page so we definitely recommend taking a, bit, a minute or so and getting oriented and getting used to this admin dashboard because there's a lot of really important things on this dashboard. Your team page is the face of your nonprofit for the 2021 Community Challenge, so you'll want to make sure it looks good and represents you well. Um, just so you know, your team page link is the link that you'll share with your supporters to ask them to donate to your challenge page. So to share your page, just copy and paste the URL from your browser into an email or a social post or wherever you're going to be advertising the campaign. So as you're getting started, you'll want to customize your team page to match your brand. Um, there are two 
ways to start customizing. You can click the page editor in your dashboard. This will open up everything you are able to edit. And if you're a list person, you can go down the list that opens after choosing page editor to make sure you hit everything you want to. Um, the other way to customize, as you can see in the visual here on the slide, is to use the little pencil icons that appear on the page to indicate a, that a section can be edited. Just click the pencil um, and that section will open up for editing. And the pencil icon is sort of the universal editing icon on Mighty Cause. So if you need to edit something and you see a pencil icon, that would be how you do it. Also within your settings uh, is the beneficiary settings, which is where you can customize the checkout flow for your challenge team. Um, this is probably one of the more important features to focus on when you're setting up your organization's team page. Uh, the checkout flow section gives you a lot of control over the donation process for your organization during the challenge. Um, it allows you to opt into collecting information that you want from donors, like addresses and phone numbers. And you can also set up custom donations amounts and add descriptions to help tie those amounts into items or services your nonprofit provides to strengthen your appeal to donate. Um, checkout flow also allows you to preview the whole checkout process without actually making a test, test donation so that you can see what the final process looks like and use that to edit yourself if needed. Um, checkout flow is also where you'll go to set up your thank you page, which uses the same text editor as your story on your team page. So you can add text, links, a video or image, and you can also add a custom call to action or CTA button that tells donors where you'd like them to go next. A cool idea would be, for instance, asking them to sign up for your email list if you wanted to collect some more subscribers. Um, so there's a lot that you can do in your checkout flow tool to optimize your campaign and customize that checkout process for donors. So you'll definitely want to spend some time customizing this team page using everything we just talked about, because the more work you put into it, chances are the better you will do during the community challenge donors like when a page has been shown a little bit of love so it behooves you to go in and make sure that this page is customized. Um, you can have the best campaign strategy in the world but when your team and the page where people actually go to make donations looks like you haven't shown it any love or attention you may unfortunately end up losing donors. If you haven't done so yet, you're going to need to upload documentation to make sure that you can receive any prize grants your organization wins during the challenge. Uh, you will need to provide your organization's W-9 and your most recent 990. This paperwork is due by tomorrow, uh, July 15th. Um, you can find the link to upload the paperwork to the challenge website at rockcommunitychallenge.com. You'll get an email once we've received your pa paperwork uh, confirming that we've received it. And if you have any questions at all, you can email rockchallenge at mightycause.com. So moving on from the prize documentation, but before we get into the prizes available this year, I want to make sure I mention the really great tools that you have access to as part of this challenge. The nonprofit toolkit has tips and tricks, FAQs, walkthroughs, and it also has templates that you can use for email and social media to help you get inspired and figure out how to promote your campaign. This is also where you'll be able to find today's training and recording of the webinar, as well as any logos, graphics you can download to start tying your brand into the community challenge brand. Um, so be sure to check back and refer back to it as you're planning your campaign. It's a really great resource and it's available to all of you. So I definitely recommend taking advantage of that. All right, so now we're going to move into talking about all of the amazing prizes that are, are available through the Rock Family of Companies Community Challenge. The Rock Family of Companies Community Challenge is offering five grand prize grants to the organizations that raise the most in each market. The grand prize leaderboards for each market are on the specific markets subpage. As soon as the challenge begins, participating organizations will start getting tracked by the dollars that they've raised. Now, it's important to mention that only online donations that are made through the Mighty Cause platform count for leaderboard totals. So this is a big reason why you want to push your donors to give online. You can certainly record a check that was given to you. It just won't be reflected in your leaderboard totals. And the reason for that is because we don't and cannot verify your offline donations. Um, the leaderboard will reflect, reflect your cumulative total from the time the challenge begins at 12 p.m. Eastern time um, on August 2nd. So it's a running 
total of everything you've raised online. And here you're engaging in some friendly competition for those prizes. Um, so there's the uh, slide here that has all of the details. This is a lot of information, um, but basically for each market, there are five prizes available. Um, Detroit, uh, the first place gets $25,000, second gets 15,000, third gets 10,000, fourth gets 7,500, and fifth gets 5,000. Um, and then for the rest of them, the, uh, Cleveland, Phoenix, uh, you get 15,000 for first place, second place gets 10,000, third gets 5,000, fourth gets $2,500, and fifth place gets $1,000 for Cleveland and Phoenix. Um, for Charlotte, first place gets 7,000, second place gets 4,000, third gets $2,500, fourth gets 1,000 and fifth gets 500. And for the national market, first place gets $15,000, second place gets $10,000, third gets 5,000, fourth gets 2,500, and fifth gets 1,000. So that is a lot of prize money. That's a lot of opportunity to win. Um, and you can refer back to this chart if you need to figure out what the prizes are that are available. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of prize money at play. There's a lot of additional prizes available as well. Um, we have a specific bonus geared just for small organizations that runs through the whole campaign. Um, please note that the current budget size threshold to participate in this bonus is 1.5 million. Um, there are lots of matching funds available, basically a whole lot of opportunities to win. All of these prizes, method of entry, entries and dates associated with them are on the challenge site at Rock Community Challenge challenge.org under the bonus challenges tab so you can reference them at any time. Each market has different numbers of winners or prize amounts, so you'll want to make sure that you reference your market's bonus challenge tab when checking them out. So basically, this is a lot of information. No one expects you to remember this or memorize this from the slide, so you can check in at the um, Rock Community Challenge website and make sure that you have them. You can list them and read them as you need it. Um, bonus prizes will have live leaderboards this year, so you can see where you stand at any time. The key to winning them is getting your donors invested in helping you climb the leaderboard. So keep tabs on your position on the leaderboard and keep your donors and supporters updated on where you are. Um, continually emphasize how much money is at stake. How much could this extra prize money do for your charity? What would that help you achieve? Tie that big back into to your overall messaging about what you do and why you do it to really get people excited about helping you win that prize money. Um, and another trick is just to concentrate on sustaining momentum and keeping the fundraising going and starting and finishing strong. All right, so now we're going to move into some community challenge campaign strategy. The leaderboards provide some of the biggest prizes available for the Rock family of companies community challenge and the key to winning them is getting is in getting your donors invested in helping you climb the leaderboard. Um, so basically using the friendly competition to your advantage. So keep tabs on your position on the leaderboard and keep your donors and supporters updated on where you are. Continually emphasize how much is at stake, how much could $10,000 do for your charity, what would that help you achieve and so on. Um, and you just wanna keep sustaining momentum. Um, so yeah, the leaderboards are a place where you can use the competition aspect to your advantage to sort of use it as a call to action to, hey, help us get to this position or we're almost this at this position. And you can really use the leaderboards and your position within that leaderboard to help motivate your supporters to help you now. So since the community challenge is a month long event, the trick to making the most of the event is to sustain your fundraising momentum. And one great way to do that and make sure your campaign is on track is to set mini goals for your nonprofit to help uh, generate buzz and build excitement. The great thing about the community challenge is the weekly bonus challenges that you can win. So you can help util you can utilize those to help sustain your fundraising momentum and get people excited about helping you win those prizes. We'll go over them in detail a little bit later on, uh, but basically you'll wanna think of an, your overall fundraising goal and what you'll need to raise each week to get to that larger goal. Now, typically the first and last weeks are your strongest. So you may want to boost your middle week by utilizing a matching grants just to shake up your campaign and keep people engaged. 
Something else you can do to get your campaign rolling is asking for seed donations. Um, these are donations from people in your nonprofit's inner circle that essentially break the ice with donors because nobody likes to be the first donor. That's a tricky thing about fundraising is that you're more likely to get donations when you already have some donations in the bank and people can see that. So seed donations help get the ball rolling and they're called seed donations because they make the, they make the number of donations grow. Um, people ask for, to ask for a seed donation would be your board of directors, your staff, especially those who are director or C-suite level leaders at your organization, volunteers, or anyone else at your nonprofit who is highly engaged in your work. Um, these don't have to be huge donations, but getting a little bit um, in the bank by tapping people in your inner circle really does help your campaign move forward and get donations rolling in. Um, so it's a really great strategy to, to get some seed donations and appeal to those people who you know are your tried and true supporters to help you uh, get started. A great strategy for driving donations on a giving day um, is securing a matching grant. A matching grant is essentially a large donation that your nonprofit profit leverages to bring in other smaller donations by offering up offering it up as a match. For instance, if you had someone to, willing to give you just $1,000, instead of just putting that money in the bank and calling it a day, you could use it as a matching grant. So in terms of the grant, the terms of the grant are totally up to you and the grantor, there's a lot of flexibility there. But let's say there's a bonus prize available and you'd like to do whatever you can to drive donations during that week so that you can win. You take that $1,000 and say to your followers, hey, between this day and this day donations will be matched up to $1,000, which basically allows them to double their donation. Everybody likes a good deal. So it's a great way to motivate your supporters to give so that they can take advantage of that match that's available. You can do a lot within the Mighty Cause Matching Grants tool, like setting a cap for the donation matching, say $200, so that someone doesn't come along and make a very large donation and eat up your entire match. Um, I've seen that happen before. So if you have a, a, a matching grant, it's always a good idea to set a cap on that match so that somebody doesn't make a huge donation and totally wipe it out. Um, so it's a really cool and complex little tool that allows you to do a lot with your matching grant. And on our platform, we've seen that matching grants, especially during a giving event, can be a really powerful, powerful way to drive donations. Organizations that have matching grants overall on the Mighty Cause platform tend to raise more money. So since a matching grant is just ultimately a large donation, you'd want to follow basically the same process that you would follow when you're securing any major gift. Um, you prospect, prospect, cultivate, and ask. Um, people that you should consider as prospects for a matching grant are your board members first and foremost. Sometimes an individual board member will be happy to provide a matching grant on their own, but one thing that you can also consider to get your board engaged is asking your board, board to work together to pr provide a match. Um, if your board still has to pay its dues, for instance, you could utilize their dues by turning it into a matching grant. Uh, major gift donors who have given large donations to your nonprofit in the past are also really good prospects. And providing a matching grant can be a fun way to liven up their donations so that instead of just writing a check, they're helping your nonprofit grow and drive other donations, um, which is really a fun way for them to get involved and a way to keep them engaged and excited about your cause. And you can also also give that donor some extra recognition when you're promoting the match. So major gift donors who like a little shout out are even better matching grant prospects. Corporate sponsors are also good prospects because it's a fun, proactive way for them to get involved in a very public way and draw attention to their philanthropy. Um, at this stage in the game, you can start making phone calls, setting up emails, um, and starting to cultivate these prospects by letting them know what you're doing and seeing how warm they might be to the idea of getting involved. Um, and then in the coming couple of weeks, you can make your ask and shore up the details for your match. Um, you can have more than one match running at the same time on Mighty Call. So a lot of nonprofits, uh, especially for these longer challenges, will have a new, grant, a new matching grant every week. Um, so if you get a lot of great responses, if you get a lot of bites when you're having these conversations with your donors, don't feel like you have to pick and choose one. You can do all of them um, and you can actually set them to fire at a specific time so that you can be very strategic in how you're utilizing matching grants. 
at the end of the day, a matching grant is basically just a marketing tool. So in order to make the most of your matching grant, you'll need to promote it to your supporters. So the first step is going to the matching grant tool on the Community Challenge team page. You can find that under uh, the fundraising part of your dashboard and just add it there. Um, there are some marketing tools built into the platform that promote your matching grant for you. Um, some of the things that they do is put a sticker on your donate button when the grant is active so that any Anybody who clicks that button is aware that you have a live matching grant. Um, there are some changes to your checkout process that reflect the match, and the match gets listed on your nonprofit profile. Um, but you'll also want to add some information to your story, especially if it's a very big match, and promote it on your social media channels, send out an email, and so on to let your followers know about the match. Countdowns add urgency, so counting down and sharing your progress can be a really great way to get people excited and urge them to stop scrolling, stop what they're doing, and make a donation to your, your campaign. So moving on a little from matching grants, I wanted to talk a little bit about ambassadors. Um, ambassadors are people who are usually in your nonprofit's inner circle who can help boost your campaign. So that includes board members, volunteers, especially ones who are highly engaged, those rock star volunteers that you can always count on, staff members, and so on. Um, utilizing ambassadors can help you break out of your list of existing supporters and engage new people. Um, and those are all people that you normally wouldn't otherwise have access to. Um, an ambassador can help you in a few different ways. Um, they can simply share a link to your page with their social circle, their peers, and ask them to donate and help signal boost your campaign for the community challenge. If you have a board member, for instance, who is very well connected, as many board members happen to be, this can be a huge boost and get the word out to a whole lot of people. Um, or they can help by getting involved in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So team fundraising um, is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, where you basically deputize your supporters to fundraise on your behalf. Your official, official fundraising page for the Rock Community Challenge is set up as a team page, so we recommend taking advantage of this since it can be a great way to shake up your campaign and acquire new donors. So you would ask ambassadors to join your community challenge team. Um, this may sound like a big ask, but it's often a really fun way to engage your biggest supporters and allow them to tell their own story about your nonprofit, how they came to work with you and why your work is important to them. Um, and this doesn't distract or draw attention away from your campaign because they're operating alongside your campaign and reaching out to people they know personally for donations. Um, in most cases, their friends and colleagues and family are not people that your nonprofit would have access to to solicit for donations. So you're actually picking up new donors through peer to peer most of the time. Um, so for people like your board, volunteers, staff, and program alumni, this can be a great way for them to get involved without just being asked to give money. And it can be a much more meaningful um, way for them than just making a donation or sharing a link because it's personal to them. They're asking people they know to support them by making a donation. So it can actually be part of your steward stewarding process of building and sustaining a relationship with that donor and that supporter. Um, we've also seen nonprofits get some great peer-to-peer -peer action going just by inviting people on social media or sending them an email asking for help. Um, for younger people who have a big social network and are digital natives who are really comfortable online, they maybe don't have much cash to give on their own, but this can be an excellent way for them to help out and make a meaningful contribution beyond what they could just give in terms of a donation from them to you. To help make things easier for them, you can share some images, talking points, um, facts and logos with them, or you can create a fundraiser template um, people can use to get set up more quickly and that pre-fills some of the sections of their page. Um, and you can also email team and event members through the platform to help keep them motivated. Um, nonprofits that utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tend to raise more money during giving events. So it's definitely worth talking about how you can incorporate it into your campaign strategy. Um, the timeline is great for you to get started on this, and you can start asking people to join your team now so that they can begin raising money on August 2nd. So the timing here is perfect um, to invite peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers to join you for the challenge.
So your email list is going to be one of your most important tools during the community challenge because emails are a direct line to your supporters. Unlike, unlike social media, you don't have to worry about an algorithm getting in your way or preventing people from seeing uh, what you send them because unless they've unsubscribed, it'll end up right in their inbox, right at the top of their inbox and probably send them a notification on their phone. Um, so I wanted to talk for a bit about email strategy because that's going to be important for the challenge. Um, in general, you'll want to keep emails relatively short, simple, and skimmable. Um, most people read their email on their phone these days, so they're not going to read a novel. Um, they're going to want to be able to skim it and get the point. So just make sure that your point, please donate, jumps right out at them. Um, people are also much more likely to read emails that pertain directly to them. So we highly recommend segmenting your email list by sorting donors into a few key groups. Um, donors who have given a lot or on a regular basis, one-time donors, people who have utilized your services but never made a donation, one-time donors, your board, volunteers, and so on. You're not going to talk to all of these audiences in the exact same way. You know, a board member has a very different relationship to your nonprofit than a volunteer who's in there every week does. So segmenting your email list, basically taking that big list of everyone and chopping that up into groups based on affinity, things about them that are alike, is a really great way to get people more engaged in reading your email because you're talking more directly to who they are as people and the relationship they have with your nonprofit. Um, you don't need to craft entirely to new emails for each of these groups. Um, even though you're not talking to them exactly the same, the general email is going to be more or less the same and you can just tweak small things about it um, in those emails for each group to make it personal. Uh, for instance, in an email to volunteers, you may want to acknowledge how much they already help your nonprofit. Um, and you also wouldn't want to send an email to a major gift donor asking for a $25 donation. So identify your key segments, the, the key people that you want to be talking to during the challenge, and figure out how best to tailor your message to them. Again, you're not making a huge new email for each audience. You're just slightly tweaking it so that it's more specific to who they are as a, a supporter. When your email is tailored to who the recipient is and the relationship they have with your organization, they're much more likely to actually read it and take action on it. Um, how you segment depends on the program you're using, but most services like Constant Contact and MailChimp use tags to segment groups of people on your email list. So it's definitely possible to do with most programs. Um, and if you're not sure how to do that, you can always Google um, how to segment emails. Um, one thing you'll also wanna pay close attention to, um, especially during a challenge like this is the timing of your emails, particularly if you are aiming to win a bonus prize. I would recommend taking the time to schedule as much as you can beforehand and have a template ready, a template email ready for um, things that you need to send on the day of, like a blast email helping, asking people to help you get to your campaign goal or an announcement that you want a prize just so that you can just plug and play get the information you need in there and send it off so you don't have to build any emails during the challenge. Um, as I mentioned before, most people read their emails on their phones these days. So make sure that when you're building your emails, you're choosing mobile friendly email templates and make sure that you test it out beforehand. Um, I recommend trying it on an iPhone and an Android just to make sure that it looks how you want it to look. Um, unfortunately, when we do like a preview on our desktop computer, we can see what it looks like but sometimes the translation between the email programs preview and your actual phone and the app you're using to read it can be a little bit different. Um, so make sure you're actually testing it on a physical phone. And I recommend trying it on an iPhone and an Android. Um, if you have any staff members that have those different types of phones, you can get them to help you out. Um, leading up to the event, um, we also recommend doing some A-B testing, particularly with subject lines, because you'll want to make sure that people are driven to open your emails for the community challenge. So try out different subject line formats, um, testing things like adding emojis, um, seeing if something works better, exclamation points versus no exclamation points. There's a lot of variables that you can test out um, so that you can optimize your emails for the challenge. 
A-B testing, if you're new to that term, is basically splitting an email up into 50-50 and testing a variable. So let's say you're testing a button color or a subject line. You want to see if an email gets more opens with or without an emoji in the subject line. Half your list gets email A with one subject line and half get email B with a different subject line where you're testing the variable and whichever email gets the most opens wins. Um, for the button color or placement, the email with the most clicks would win. Um, you just want to be careful um, about testing too much and throwing too many variables in there because then it's really hard to say what may have caused more people to open the email or click on the link. Um, so it's definitely better if you keep it simple and you test one variable at a time. Uh, lastly, your CTA should be clear and action oriented. So give now, donate now, help us today. Uh, more passive CTAs like thanks for donating and please contribute are really just not as effective as more direct uh, calls to action. So you wanna be crystal clear and urgent about what you're asking them to do. Since a lot of people, they skim, so they wanna see what you're asking of them when they look at the email. So their eyes will go straight to your CTA button and what the point of your email is. All right, so for giving events, we really recommend just staying in your comfort zone and going where your audience is. Um, what I mean by that is that if you've never logged on to TikTok before in your whole life, you do not need to use TikTok for the community challenge. Um, if you have a thousand followers on your Facebook page, but only a handful of followers on Instagram, then you should spend way more time and effort promoting your campaign on Facebook than Instagram. So stay in your lane and put your efforts into the platform where you're most likely to reach people and have an impact. Um, I definitely recommend um, scheduling any posts that you can ahead of time just to save yourself some trouble during the challenge and leading up to it. Um, get your key content scheduled with Facebook's publishing tools um, or Creator Studio. You can go into TweetDeck for Twitter and schedule your tweets. And just save any live posting for stuff that needs to be done um, during the event, like thanking donors, updates on your progress, um, prize announcements, letting them know that you've won a prize. Um, and to that end, you'll really want to assign a point person to man manage your social media and monitor what's going on with your social media so that you can be responsive to comments and interact with your followers, since that is really important on social media. And interaction can also help you in terms of the algorithm um, that most social media platforms use, since most platforms do show in a priority to posts that have lots of engagement the type of engagement that matters varies per, for each profile, but definitely being uh, present and engaging with your supporters is really um, helpful to your social media posts as a whole. Uh, we do recommend budgeting a little bit of money if you're able to, to boost some posts or promote some tweets. And on social media, it's really not that expensive. $20 for an ad can really go a long way. Um, you'll want to make sure that your ad is properly targeted. And if you aren't sure how to target an ad, you can always default to targeting the people who like your page or follow you already. Um, in terms of the type of content that does well on social media, it depends a little bit on the platform. Um, like, obviously, you can't do a long text post with no images on Instagram, but in general, photos and videos do extremely well. And you may want to consider doing something out of the box, like a Facebook Live or a watch party for a campaign video to help generate some buzz while you're delivering some algorithm friendly content so that you get in front of more people's eyes on their feeds. And finally, when you're planning your campaign, follow-up is really important to consider. That should be part of your planning process. So when you're planning your content, you'll also want to plan how you're going to thank your donors. Um, things like making a video or a photo of your staff saying thank you can be really great for this. Um, be sure to talk about the impact of the funds you raised and close the loop on your campaign. That means if you were fundraising for something specific, like a, a new piece of equipment or improvements to your building or something along those lines, you'll also want to send emails periodically on your progress so that people know what's happening with the money that they donated to you. Um, you'll want to make sure that you've got an onboarding plan in place for new donors so they come back to donate again. If you collect addresses, mailing them a welcome packet can be a really great way to get them onboarded. And can also you can also create an automated email journey where they can get more information about what you do and why it's important to support, support your work. 
All right, so as we wrap this up, I wanna make sure our support team's contact information is here for you to reference. Um, they are a great resource before uh, and during the, the challenge for anything campaign related. If you need help setting up your EFT, if you need some help figuring out how to strategize around the weekly bonuses, or if your donor needs a, rece a receipt resent, that was hard to say, a receipt resent, you can reach out to them at any time. Um, Mighty Cause is here to support you during the challenge. We're also here to support your donors. So if a donor needs something related to their donation, like a receipt, or they have some sort of issue, um, sometimes we'll see people uh, accidentally click a button twice and donate more than once. Our support team can manage that question for you so that you don't have to play telephone with our support staff. You can always send them to rockchallenge at mightycause.com and have them speak directly to our support team. Um, and we also have a support library at support.mightycause.com that I wanted to mention as well. If you want walkthroughs, if you're like, how do I access my donation report and so on and so forth, you can go to support.mightycause.com and you can check out that support library. All right, so now it is time for questions. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen because sometimes, oh, no, here it is. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to have to stop, stop sharing my screen, screen to uh, read some of the questions. And uh, since I'm not the project manager for the Rock Community Challenge, I'm probably going to lean a little bit on Deneen. So we'll read some of the questions that are already um, in the chat. Um, this is a question from Susan. Uh, will our specific case be showing two weeks prior to the challenge since it, it is recommended that we send communication with the challenge link to potential supporters at that time? Um, our specific case. I'm not quite sure what that means. Deneen, are you able to answer that question? Yeah, it, it doesn't. I'm sorry. I, I'm not sure what is meant by case either. It sounds like what's being asked, and I'm sorry if this is wrong. If you're asking if your team fundraiser page link is up and running, um, Technically, yes, it is, but we're not accepting any uh, any donations until the start of the actual challenge, which is August 2nd. Okay, great. Thank you. Um... Yeah, I'm not totally sure about that either, but you can always email if that wasn't the question, you can always email Deneen after the or email rock community or rock challenge at mightycause.com and get some answers to that question if that was not helpful to you, Susan. Um, but we'll move on to the next one. This one is from Tyrone, and this sounds like it's going to be something for Deneen again. Um, Tyrone asks, we received an email notifying us that we had completed our paperwork uploading a 990 and W9, but our organization Sons Outreach is not listed in the Detroit area nonprofit listing. Should I be concerned? Um, that I'm not too sure about. Is that a search, Deneen? So if you're referring to the particular market that you've been designated to, that is really based on your office location and or your primary um, service community. So the community in which, what population you serve. Um, if you are supposed to be in the Detroit market, uh, meaning again, that your either your office is located in Detroit or the majority of the community that you serve is based in Detroit, please reach out to me um, either, you know, I guess we can just um, stick with the rock um, I'm sorry, Rocket. I'm trying to remember what the email is. I'm so sorry, Linda. Rock no, challenge okay. at mightycause.com. Yeah, me... lots of emails to keep yes. track of. I believe that that's correct. You can reach out directly to the rock challenge at mightycause.com um, email address, and we can resolve that and put you in the correct uh, category if you are not supposed to be in the national one, which I'm assuming you're probably in. So just reach out to us and we will uh, rectify that issue. Oh, great. Th thank you. Yeah, and it is rockchallenge at mightycause.com. That is the email address and that's on the slides. Um, so you should be able to, to copy that from the slides if you're not uh, if you're not able to remember that email address, but it's rockchallenge at community at mightycause.com. Um, so the next question is from Amanda, um, and there's actually a couple of questions. Um, so the first question is, how do I add join a team to the Mighty Cause page? 
um, or join team to the Mighty Cause page. So there's a couple of things that could be happening here. Um, if your team page is not published, people can't join it. So make sure that your team page is published um, and it's up and ready so people can view it. The other situation that could be causing you to not have join team on your Mighty Cause team on your your page. I'm not sure if you're talking about the team page or your organization page. On your organization page, um, they can click fundraise, which is a button that's going to always be on your organization page. And then they can go through that process to join a team. They would just want to opt to join an existing team. It'll ask them as they go through that process, are you trying to start a fundraiser on your own or are you trying to join a team or event? Um, and they'll be able to go through that click path to get to your team page. On your team page itself, um, um, it should be there if your page is published and you don't have it set to invite only. So go into your settings and make sure that it's not set to uh, make your page your team invite only. That can be a reason why you won't see that join team button on your team page because you've set it to only include to, to only include people who you've personally invited. So just make sure that your settings are correct. Um, and if you're talking about your organization page, um, they can always just click fundraise um, to get to your team page and join your team. Um, and as in terms of seeing whether your page is live or published, um, if you're not able to see that, um, I would say that your page is probably not published if you're not seeing join team on your team page, but you can always check in your settings. It should tell you there. And if you're in doubt, if you're not quite sure where to check and you're not able to see if your page is published or not, then reach out to our support team and they can help you out and let you know. Um, without having your page in front of me, I'm not sure, but those are likely things that are happening. Either your page isn't published or you have it set to invite only. Um, there's a second question here um, from Amanda. Our organization currently has a Mighty Cause page in addition to our Rock fundraiser page. When I try to add our 2021 Rock campaign, it does not appear in the search results. How can I add it to our organizational campaign? Um, so I think that the, the issue might be that you either have your, uh, your page set it's not published, so I would check that um, or just check your settings. There is also a discover, discoverability setting um, in your settings on your team page where basically you can hide it from searches. So if you have that checked, then people won't be able to find your page and our search is being told not to list that page. So there's a couple of different um, scenarios that could be happening, but um, without seeing the team page, I would say if you're not really able to figure it out, just looking at your settings, you can always email our support team and they will be happy to look at it for you and tell you what needs to be done on your end. So there's a lot of different variables because you have a lot of control over your, your team page and your organization page on Mighty Cause. Um, so if you're not able to sort of look at your settings and figure out where you may have gone sideways, um, our support team will help you figure it out and make sure that you're able to get whatever you would like done accomplished. All right, so let's see if we have any more questions. Oh, this is a great one. This is a great one for Deneen. Um, this is a question from Sherry. Uh, she asks, how long has the Rock Community Challenge been supporting nonprofits? That is a great question. And I would say from inception, but I am definitely um, probably one of our newer team members. This is my second year with the Rocket Community Fund in regards specifically to the challenge. This will be our sixth year running the community challenge. And this will be our largest year because last year we were really excited to break a record and have over 130 nonprofits participate. This year we are just about almost to 160 nonprofits that are participating this year. So already year six has been really, really busy, but we are really excited about it. All right, awesome. Um, so let's see, there's a couple of specific questions about um, dashboards and things that people are seeing on their own dashboards. Um, definitely, I would say if you have a specific question about your situation, um, you can always email support. We do get back to you within 24 hours. So please just give our, our support team 24 hours to read your question and get back to your specific concern. Um, but I really, since we have a lot of um, questions here, I just wanna make sure that we're answering questions that are applicable to other people's situations. Um, so I'm just going to take a minute and just kind of read what we've got because we've also got some in the chat. 
Um, let's see. Oh, this is a really great question from Randy. Um, can we increase our fundraising goal during the challenge? Um, so I'll answer, I'll give the Mighty Cause answer. And if there's any uh, rule for Rock Community Challenge that I'm not aware of, um, Deneen, please feel free to correct me. But absolutely, you are not locked into a specific fundraising goal on Mighty Cause. We're not an all or nothing platform. So if you wanted to set a stretch fundraising goal, if you hit your goal, earlier than you expected and you want to make that goal a little bit bigger so that you can raise a little bit more money and get people motivated, you can absolutely change that at any time. You just go into your goal and you edit the amount and that changes the display for you. Um, it's really that simple. You have complete control over the display of your goal. Um, so you're not locked into anything and you can change it at any time you'd like during the challenge. Uh, it's not set in stone and it's definitely something you can easily edit. Um, and I just want to check with with Danina, make sure that that's okay according to the Rock Community Challenge rules. Yes, that's consistent across the board. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, this is a question from Gloria. Um, I missed the first webinar. Is that one online? I believe that one's on the Rock Community Challenge site um, under resources. So you can check there for the recording of that webinar if you missed that one um, if, or if you wanted to review anything from that webinar. So yeah, that is available under resources. Um, and this one will be available there as well. Yep, I'm just going to pop in really quickly. So um, this year, the first webinar was not live. It was um, pre-recorded, so we didn't have any session that you missed. It is, uh, we did move it. It's actually under um, NPO toolkit. So in the same place that you'll find those really cool graphics that Linda uh, chatted about earlier in the webinar is the same place that you will find uh, the pre-recorded uh, first webinar. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying. Um, this is another question, and this is actually a really great question. Um, this is from, I think it's Thu. I'm sorry if I butchered that. Um, this is, um, can our organization also include opportunities to get involved uh, with our own personal donate link on the CrowdRise team page? Um, so I do want to clarify, and I'll allow Deneen to weigh in as well. Um, so the challenge is hosted on the Mighty Cause platform. So you can certainly collect donations elsewhere, but it does not benefit you because the challenge is hosted on Mighty Cause. So if you would like those donations to be counted for the Rock Community Challenge, you want to try to direct people to Mighty Cause as much as, pos as possible um, because those won't count toward prizes. Um, they would basically have to be added to Mighty Cause as offline donations, which don't count towards your leaderboard totals and are not eligible for prizes. So if at all possible, direct any donors or anybody fundraising for you to use Mighty Cause since that is the chosen platform of the Rock Community Challenge. And I'll just let Deneen answer um, from her end as well. Yeah, I, I really think you actually covered it, uh, Linda. Yeah, it's pretty consistent from our perspective as well. We, we don't count offline donations and that's essentially what that would be uh, classified as. So if, again, as Linda said, it's possible, just direct all your donations during the month of August directly to the Mighty Cause platform. Excellent, thank you. Um, and then there's another great question on, along those same lines from Randy. Um, and his question or her question, I'm not sure if Randy is a, a male or female, um, but it's, uh, we have used constant contact in Facebook for several years. The donate button used for both medias direct the donates donations directly to our bank account. Does Mighty Cause provide us a new donate button link? Um, yeah, so basically um, for Facebook, Facebook is going to direct any donate buttons that you insert in a post that isn't linking outside of Facebook through Facebook payments. Um, so you don't want to use Facebook's payment options. You want to use Mighty Cause. So you would want to actually plug in the URL for Mighty Cause um, and link people to your, your team page to make a donation for the challenge. Um, and the same thing goes for constant contact. Um, it's an email marketing program, so you should have control over where that link goes. Um, so you would just want to change that out to whatever link is currently in your donate button in your emails within Constant Contact and update that to go to the URL where you are collecting donations, which is more than likely your team page for the event, um, and just send people there. It is an extra 
um, click. They just have to click on your link and then click donate, and then they will be put right into the process. But that way, those donations will count toward the community challenge. They'll be included in the leaderboard and they will be eligible for prizes. So I would really make sure leading up to the challenge that you make sure that you're not linking people elsewhere. You want to have one central place to collect donations, and that place is your Mighty Cause team page for the challenge. Um, so any links outside of that that go directly to your bank account, that might be through PayPal, that might be through CrowdRise or Facebook, don't use those. I mean, you can, you have the freedom to use whatever you would want, but you have to use Mighty Cause if you want them to be included in your, your total and be eligible for prizes. Um, so just make sure that if you tend to use an email template that has a link that goes somewhere else, just update that URL. That's really easy to do in constant contact. And I believe in their support library, you can find some walkthroughs for how to do that if you're not quite sure how to do that. But regardless of what platform you use outside of this challenge, you wanna just make sure that for the purposes of the challenge, you're directing people to Mighty Cause so that you get credit for those donations, basically. You can track them, you can enter them as offline donations, um, but obviously the point is we want you to be able to win prizes and take some money home for your nonprofit, and you won't get that opportunity if you're collecting donations elsewhere outside of Mighty Cause. Um, so I, I hope that that helps, um, but yeah, just as, as much as you can direct people to the Mighty Cause platform so that you get credit in the challenge for those donations. Um, and then there's one more question, I think, um, and it's can people can people create teams before the challenge begins on August 2nd? Uh, I'm gonna defer to Deneen here, but I believe the answer is yes. You just wanna not accept donations before the challenge begins. Yes, that's correct. You can definitely start teams long before the challenge begins. Um, again, just no donations before August 2nd because they won't be counted. Perfect. Thank you. And then there's actually, sorry, we've got, I've got two panels going. We've got some questions from Sherry. Um, and I think those are our final questions. Um, Sherry asks, I, I see some options are advanced in the fundraising tools. How do we gain access to them? So advanced is our subscription service. Um, so in order to gain access to those specific tools, if you'd like to utilize them, you would need to subscribe to Mighty Cause Advanced. Um, so if you have any questions about that you can reach out to us at Mighty Cause and we're happy to help you out. Um, and that would be a good option if you don't have a, a fundraising platform that you use right now, you might see that that's worth the investment because you're already set up on Mighty Cause. Um, but that's what Advanced is. It's our subscription program that gives you a little bit more access to some tools on Mighty Cause that you can use year round, like our supporters CRM tool. Um, and then she asked specifically about text to give, um, and that is an advanced feature. So unfortunately you would need a subscription to advanced if you wanted to utilize text to give through the Mighty Cause platform. Um, but if you're interested in that, just let us know and we'll help you out. We can always also set you up with a free trial. Um, so just contact us if you would like some more information about that. But that's what that means. If you see a feature that is not available to you with your current, um, your current plan through the challenge. Um, all right, so I think that's it for our questions. And thank you for Deneen for helping me as I stumbled through some of them since I'm not super familiar with all of the ins and outs of the Rock Community Challenge. Um, so we will go ahead and get this posted on the, um, the site under resources as soon as we're able to. It takes a little bit of time to get it up on YouTube, but we will get it there as soon as we can. Um, and I think that's it for this webinar. Um, thank you all for joining me today and for bearing with me since this isn't a, a product that I manage, but I really appreciate your patience and all your fantastic questions. And thank you to Deneen for helping me uh, in the, the Q&A portion. Absolutely, and thank you so much, Linda. I do appreciate all your help with this. And I see a couple of questions. I think you kind of went over this early. There are a couple of questions um, that maybe are really specific. So I just encourage you guys to make sure you reach out to the, the uh, rock challenge at mycause.com email to make sure you get your questions answered before the community challenge starts so that once August 2nd hits that we are all off to the ridges. So I also do want to mention there was one a participant that asked what my email address was. I did type that. I don't know if everyone sees that or if it just goes directly to the individual who asked. Um, but obviously you probably picked up from this webinar that if it is specific to the challenge from a, um, 
programmatic perspective, definitely reach out to me. Any site-specific questions, you'll definitely want to reach out to that rockchallenge at mightycause.com email address. But thank you again, Linda, and thank you to our participants. And I hope that everyone was uh, able to take away uh, a couple nuggets of knowledge and um, some strategies to really set you all up for success. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Happy fundraising. Enjoy the rest of your uh, your Wednesday. I hope you all have a great day, and we'll get this uploaded as soon as we po we can we possibly can. Uh, thank you, and have a great day.